Hello everyone, today we're talking about something that is personally very interesting to me and I'm not sure how many people realize that it could have really big implications and that is the new status conditions in Pokemon Legends Arceus, um, which are kind of just a restructuring of um, existing status conditions. Um, before we talk about the actual video itself, of course I will be talking about these status conditions in depth and so if you don't want to know anything beyond the fact that they exist, uh, I'd recommend clicking off now. Um, the other thing I want to talk about before we get into it is, number one, I don't know what's going on with my hair, so I do apologize. I don't really apologize, it's, you know, if you've been around for the... If, if you've been watching me for a while, then you know this is very tame for me, but I am aware that I kind of look like a triangle head. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, of course, I would like to ask you to subscribe. Um, a lot of people seem to be interested in my Legends Arceus content. I do have a very deep... A vi oh, I have such... I have a very deep uh, competitive background, you know? I've got a lot of experience playing competitive Pokemon, and I know quite a bit about it. Um, and so if you're enjoying the content, I would like to ask you to subscribe. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything and helps me out a lot. Um, for me, it's really important to try and get this channel to as many subscribers as I can, in part because, you know, it's my job and I, uh, it, it has value to me in, intrinsically, but also, um, you know, a competitive Pokemon has often been a little bit overlooked, especially in a broader community sense. And so, um, being able to take a channel that really is competitive focused and get that as, you know, to wherever I can, I mean, like it's something that I'm personally interested in. And so... Um, if you can help me along in that aspect and, and consider subscribing, it would it would be good. This is the point where I'm going to switch over to the browser, and so I can show you some, uh, Sarah B's information on these new status conditions. So again, if you don't want to know about them, if you don't want to be spoiled on anything, I recommend leaving now. I'll give you three seconds. Um, okay, at this point, I mean, I guess I guess you're in it. So let's let's talk about them. So. Um, there are two new status conditions: it's frostbite, and then it is it is drowsy. Um, so, before we talk about Frostbite, like, I guess first of all, let's talk about what Frostbite does, and then we'll talk about the really important thing with Frostbite. And the, so, basically, Frostbite is the special equivalent of Burn. Um, so, basically, what it does is at the end of each turn, well, uh, in this game, it's after the Pokemon attacks, I presume, Pokemon loses a little bit of HP. Now, 116th isn't a ton of HP. It's not enough that your Pokemon's just going to be, like, melted immediately, but it does end up over time. It's especially good at Pokemon who... Um, tend to stick around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really also very good when you pair it with other things like hail, sand, right? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like passive damage effects. I mean, if this were sort of chill, let's say Vocalith and those kind of effects. But yeah, basically, it's, it's strong because it it it's it, it or one of the effects of it is that it takes one sixteenth of the maximum HP. Now, that's not really enough to write home about. Obviously, sandstorm and hail do that effect with you know um to the whole field to both your opponent's pokemon as well as to some of your own and so that's not really the interesting thing about it the interesting thing is that uh the second line here pokemon special attack stat is cut by 50 percent. so that means that this is literally the special equivalent of burn for those of you who don't know burn is the exact same thing it has the exact same description except instead of the uh, attack stat or special attack stat is the attack stat now i think a mechanics researcher might argue that it's not actually the stat that's cut but the damage but i, I wouldn't i can't say that confidently so i don't know um also ice type pokemon are immune similar to how fire type pokemon are immune to burn so um i actually after posting I, i'm not sure if you all saw but I, I made a video on um how i would fix the ice type because the ice type is probably the second worst type in the game and i, I made a video about some of the changes and i really regretted not talking about this and then they went ahead and just did what i was going to talk about and so um, this is actually a very common suggestion on the ice type videos, people suggesting this a change similar to this. To understand what makes Frostbite so good, obviously it's a strong status condition, right? Like, Burn is one of the better status conditions. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, the order of statuses are like Freeze, and then Sleep, and then I would say probably Burn at this point, and then a little bit below that is Paralysis, and then like a lot below that is Poison. Um, with Freeze being by far the best, Sleep being by far the second best, but still a gap between Sleep and Freeze, and then like a little chunk burn very narrow to paralysis i think you could argue both ways um so basically this is this if this were a mainline game it would be very good um the reason that the, excuse me the reason that this is so good is because um if a special attacker gets inflicted by the status then they've lost half of their damage output and on a lot of pokemon that can be really crucial so um all i can say is that with my experience with burn a, po a physical attacker getting burned basically it, I mean, a 50% damage reduction is a lot. It's a really significant amount. And especially if that Pokemon isn't hitting things for super effective damage, it's going to feel like it's doing basically nothing. And so, um, on a Pokemon whose main focus is to do damage, being afflicted by Burn, and now Frostbite, can be very, um, very problematic, to say. It can totally uh, invalidate a Pokemon. And so, um, like, with this, it's given us another dimension of that 
uh, of that. So instead of just physical attackers being like weakened by burn, now special attackers also have a, a, a parallel status. Um, so I think it's really interesting because it's obviously very strong. And I think the thing is that burn for me has never felt broken. Obviously, it depends on the on the ways that you can apply um, burn. However, um, or now I guess frostbite. It depends on like what moves uh, apply. And if there's a move that applies it like too much, then maybe it would feel stupid. Um, however, I think the really interesting thing here is that frostbite is obviously good i think it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting new status condition and it's interesting on its own but there's actually a second layer to of, of this that i've kind of been teasing and that that is frostbite in this game replaces freeze now freeze is arguably the single worst mechanic in all oh my audio was doubled i'm sorry about that i hope i hope the background audio wasn't annoying i didn't even notice it's been quiet, so late has been annoying. I'll just truck on, and if I have to re-record, that's fine. Um, sorry. Freeze is the arguably the single worst mechanic in Pokemon, period. Like, if you were to ask a, a smart competitive player what's one thing that they would remove, I would guess that a lot of them... Like, if you could remove one thing from Pokemon, what would it be? I would guess that Freeze is probably one of the... It's not, it might not be the most popular answer, but it's probably the correct answer. Uh, and the reason that Freeze is stupid is... Well, for a number of reasons. The first thing is that the way that Freeze works, for anyone who doesn't know, is if a Pokemon is frozen, it ha every single turn it has a 20% chance of thawing out and getting its attack off, and an 80% chance of remaining frozen. Getting hit with stuff, a Fire-type move will thaw you, and using certain moves like Scald, and I think uh, some Fire-type moves, but not all of them, like will also thaw you. Like, you can use them even while thro uh, frozen. Um, but the thing is that there's no time limit to being frozen and the probability doesn't become more likely. So it's possible to have a Pokemon get frozen that, and just have them stay frozen for um, six, seven, eight turns, right? And just have, be, have it be completely worthless. And so it is one of the stupidest status conditions in the game. And the other thing is that it's not, there's no consistent way to inflict freeze. I think that the, I think almost all moves that freeze do it 10% of the time. And in a competitive Pokemon that pretty much boils down to Ice Beam and sometimes Blizzard. Um, and I guess sometimes Try Attack if you're really, uh, Try to can freeze, right? Yeah, it's not sleep, it's not poison. Yeah, it can freeze. Um, so basically, the reason it's so dumb is because it's only ever like it only ever, and there's no move that just inflicts freeze on its own. So basically, it only ever happens as a secondary effect to a move like Ice Beam or Blizzard, which you probably weren't using for the freeze anyway. And so it feels very uncompetitive. It feels very unfair, pretty much whenever it happens. And then not only is it super difficult to pull off, and you pretty much just need to get lucky, like as a mechanic that only happens when you're lucky. Um, on top of that, it's very broken. It, it, you could just, it's basically like a one hit KO move, except that you don't have to like, it's like a one hit KO move, but you have a 20% chance of, uh, of, of dodging it instead of an, a, a typical 70 or, you know, 70% chance of dodging it. And then it only ever happens on a move that's already strong anyways, like Ice Beam or Blizzard. So it's very, very, very stupid. It's very uncompetitive. It doesn't like it's not common enough that it ruins like infinite games and you know now we have misty terrain so there's some counterplay and scald will thaw you and whatever but a lot of the time it's it's just uh it's really frustrating to have happen so freeze is awful and what we see in this game is that frostbite which we know is probably similar to burn so it should be balanced in a competitive sense um frostbite seems way more balanced so i really hope that this is a change they consider for a more traditional pokemon game because Freeze is, is very, very, very bad. It's very uncompetitive. And Frostbite seems like it should be balanced. Like, again, we'd have there's a lot more information we need before I can make, like, a definitive yes, this is good, or no, this is bad. But um, I think that it should be interesting. And as you can see, there's... It's basically all the same moves that freeze you, right? Ice Beam now probably has a... Let's just check here. Freeze. I Oh, it's... I see. 20%. And it's more common, it seems. Um, Which I guess is good. Like, I mean, it, it's... Yeah, I guess, because Skull Burn's 30%. What about this? Is this 20, 40? 30, 50. Blizzard, so Blizzard has even more then. Um, so yeah, I mean, this also, like, I was talking about how Ice is, like, a, really needs a lot of help. It's not a very good type. And so this is another reason, like, not only immunity to, um, not only immunity to, um, like, Frostbite status, but also, I mean, if it, if, if we were to think about, like, let's say it's Hailing, and that gives you higher chance of inflicting Frostbite, I don't know that's not how it would work in a real game, but let's just assume, then that's another reason to consider using Ice types and make Pokemon like a Bulma Snow and Alola Ninetales better. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good change, and I think it could really help make Ice types a lot better. Like, because if Blizzard can inflict Frostbite with, like, a decent, let's say it's, let's say you get 20% chance on Blizzard to inflict Frostbite on each target, then Pokemon that are, let's turn it down a little bit, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, 
Pokemon like Alola Ninetales and Scarf of Bomas, in certain formats, are going to be a lot more uh, valuable. I think. I think they have a lot more, a lot more value. There's a lot more um, utility that they can use because they can um, inflict Frostbite. And when you consider, you can also pair that with Aurora Veil. It can be pretty big. So, all that to say, all that to say, I think that this is a really interesting change. Um, I, I think I, I would love to see it applied to a main series Pokemon game instead of Freeze. Um, and I guess in terms of like how uh, valuable it is. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, in terms of how valuable it is, like, I guess, if it's too powerful, I'd like to see lower effect rates, like, and if it's just, like, you know, same power as Burn, then similar to Burn's effect rates, which aren't super high, I think, for moves like Flamethrower and Fire Blast. Um, other interesting thing here is that there's no move that inflicts it on its own. Um, may, 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 may. It looks like, yeah, so basically, like, uh, what I mean by that is that Burn has the move Willowisp, which is a very powerful move, which always inflicts Burn, but misses 15% of the time, and obviously is blocked by Substitute, and Misty Train, etc. Um, and so I, I was wondering if there was going to be a nice tip equivalent of that, but there's not at the moment. Um, also interesting that, like, there's a Ghost Fly. Like, like it's nice to see that it's not only Ice moves, so that's, that's cool. Alright, other, other replacement is Drowsy. Um... <clears throat> Basically, the way that Drowsy works is that um, this replaces the sleep mechanic, which, as you might remember, I said is the um, second most powerful uh, status condition in the mainline games, and it's also probably a bit too powerful. Now, I don't know exactly how I feel about Drowsy. I haven't been able to find any information online about the prob like how much the effects are. So, what I've heard is that a Drowsy Pokemon can't attack 50% of the time, um, and it also receives increased damage from attacks, um, and they also can miss when they are Drowsy if it is snowing. Um... How much increased damage they take matters a lot. If it's 50%, that's pretty powerful. Um, if it's like 10 or 20%, it's, I mean, it's still good, right? Um, it also doesn't say... Uh, I haven't been able to find anything online about how long it lasts. So status, status effects in this game have a duration. Um, that's another thing I can talk about, I guess, is whether or not that's good. But yeah, basically, Drowsy replaces Sleep. Um, and... I think that it's not stronger than Sleep, which is good. But it's, it's, it's different in a, in a weird way that... Um, I'm not entirely sure how to feel about it. It's definitely weird. It's a little bit unlike anything that we've had before because it's like like it says here on Sarah B. Joe's site, um, it's similar to Confusion. So basically, a 50% chance to not attack, we know that that's broken. I mean, we've seen that in competitive play, that Confusion, until they nerfed it, was the most broken, one of the most broken status conditions, um, especially because of how easy it was to set up. So, I mean, Pokemon that put you to sleep typically like get a pretty high payoff from it, so... Um, obviously with sleep, you, your, your Pokemon's out of commission for between one and three turns. It will miss between one and three attacks. So this definitely doesn't seem as strong, but, um, I almost wonder if like the possibility of being able to move is like, it'll probably, it's probably, I'm not sure if it'll feel worse because asleep, you're, you know, you're always asleep for a couple turns, right? At least one turn, sometimes two or three. Whereas with this, like if you were to get like a two turns in a row where you couldn't attack, you'd probably feel really angry you'd be like oh my god that's so let's say it's 50 to not attack then that's a one in four but it'll, it'll feel worse right because um because you're you expect because you know it's a possibility whereas a two turn sleep is what a one in three so i guess it is slightly more likely that you wait yeah i guess it's slightly more likely that you wake up after one turn but normally people who have two turn sleeps aren't like they're not like mauling about it i mean some players will mauled about anything but you know what i mean um and then the increased damage is interesting as well i mean your pokemon's still usable but um yeah, being uh, taking increased damage. I don't want to talk too much about this one because because it's been too difficult to find information in terms of how much they attack or how much additional damage they uh, take. I'm gonna assume it's fifty percent. But again, this is one of those things where like Legend Arceus is different than like traditional Pokemon games. So I don't want to read too much into this, even if it is fifty percent, because like that's like <clears throat> it's a different damage formula. The stats are different, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not sure if I'm not sure how much I can read into this with like and still like present good information. So basically. Uh, Frostbite, I would love to see replace Freeze. Drowsy, I would need more information on, I think, before I can make a definitive call. And I would specifically want to know how that would translate into the main series game. Like, we all can... Frostbite doesn't need to be translated, but Drowsy... You know, a Drowsy Pokemon still going to be able to, like, still take 50%. Like, in this game, moves tend to, um... Effect rates tend to be higher, because I think the battles tend to be, sh like, shorter, because everything does more damage. So, like, would this still be, like... 50% in the main game like or would it be 33% like confusion is right now, right? So um, I would want more information on this one as well But I do think it's interesting that the two statuses that they chose to kind of Re-evaluate are the two most broken status conditions in the game now sleep at this point They've added a lot of counterplay to sleep There was a the point where in generation 5 when I started playing and probably in generations before that as well 
<clears throat> totally unbalanced. Like super, 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 super unbalanced. Um, and even in Generation Six, I mean, like when I won Worlds, Dark Void Smeargle was like the meta, um, because it was broken. Um, and so they've been doing a lot of things to make sleep better. They introduced both Electric and Misty Terrain via Tapu. Uh, Coco and Tapu Fini, which is really good into it. They introduced safety goggles, a phenomenal item. Most the most popular sleep moves are typically sleep powder and spore, though hypnosis pops up sometimes, Yawn pops up sometimes. Um so they added, you know, but but normally it's the powder moves via like Pokemon like Amoongus and Venusaur. So having safety goggles is good. Making grass types immune to powder moves is really good. Um they've just been doing a lot of things that um that that makes sleep more balanced. I'm just not sure so all that to say that sleep feels manageable now is still very powerful. It's really bad if you get put to sleep, but it does feel more fair than it used to. Um, <clears throat> I think that the, there's changes that I would like to see to sleep, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if drowsy is the way that I would have approached it, to be honest. Um, because adding more like percent based chance, like per, I, in my opinion, I think that percent based chances feel bad. Um, I feel like confusion when you hurt yourself feels really bad. I feel like paralysis when you can't move feels really bad. And so, I think that I would have maybe liked to see it like maybe you stay asleep for like three turns, but if you get hit, you wake up, you know, so your opponent can kind of plan accordingly or, or something. I don't know. Or like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how I would have liked to, how I would have liked to replace this, but, um, I don't know if this is the way I would have gone about it, to be honest. But again, this, this there's no guarantee that they want to even do this in the main series game. Um, so I'm, you know, maybe, maybe they don't want to do it this way either, but they just, uh, are doing it for Legend Arceus. So it is, it is sometimes hard to tell, like, how much of this is, like, oh, this is going to be, like, a, how, is this something that could really potentially end up in a main series game? And how much of this is them just saying, let's just, like, have fun for, for this one game, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I wanted to say about about it. I'm really interested in Frostbite, personally. I, 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 I You all know that I feel like Ice type really needs a buff, and I think Frostbite could really... Excuse me. Um, I think it could be a good step in the right direction. So, yeah, this is the one I'm really interested in. And then Drowsy... Could be cool, but I really we really need more information about how it translates to a traditional game, and then um, more information even within this game about. I think this is fifty. I think both of these are fifty percent fifty percent chance to move, and then fifty percent additional damage. Um, and I think this also is lower on Alpha Pokemon for anyone who is unaware. Um, for anyone who's like, wow, the, this is not fifty percent. I always miss because that was me, and then somebody told me it didn't work on Alphas or it wasn't as effective on Alphas. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> anyway, with all that being said, I, I hope you enjoyed the the video. Um, uh, tomorrow I'm not entirely sure which video I'm doing, but, um, I'll decide soon, I guess, so, uh, there's that, but, yeah, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and let me know what you think about the status conditions in the description, or the comments down below. Bye-bye.